Moving is a part of life for many gardeners. This is my third garden and there's been some big moves along the way. If you are moving on, you don't have to leave everything behind. You can take some of your plants with you. Today, I'm going to share some tips on how to move with your plants. The simplest way to take your plants with you is by seed. They're like nature's way of transporting plants in miniature. And many plants grow well from seed, particularly annual vegetables and flowers. When you get to your new property, all you need to do is add water. Once you've picked them, you need to let them dry. And then when they're completely dry and brown, store them somewhere. So you can either store them in a jar or a paper packet. Just make sure that you label them and keep them somewhere cool and dry. Sometimes we've got plants growing in the ground that we want to dig up and take with us. I'm going to use this viburnum tinus as an example. It's less than knee height and at this size it's likely to transplant really well. Digging plants up can be really stressful to them because it severs roots and it results in moisture loss and then the plant has to expend a lot of energy to recover. So digging them up correctly is the best way to ensure their survival. Before starting, remove about a third of the foliage to compensate for the root loss. This will also help curb the amount of water the plant is losing through its leaves and make it more likely to survive the transplant. The best time to do this is in autumn and in my climate I'd wait till we've had significant autumn rains and the ground is moist enough to be able to dig. It's also a time when there's enough warmth in the soil that the plant's roots will be able to put new growth on in their new environment. Now, if you can't do it in autumn, you can still do it in winter and early spring, but obviously avoid moving plants in the heat of summer when they're going to stress for moisture. Use a sharp spade and aim to sever the roots in decisive, clean strikes. You may come across larger woody roots. These need to be cut cleanly with secateurs to ensure proper wound response and healing from the plant. Work from the sides, cutting down 90 degrees. And then, when you've encircled the plant to the depth of the spade, try levering it out of the ground. If it's still attached, start to work in sideways underneath the plant to cut the bottom roots off. If you're not going to replant it immediately, pot it on and then it will be ready to ship to its new home. Now water is the most important ingredient for a successful transplant. Make sure you water your plant in the pot really well. If it's going to stay in a pot, even be prepared to water it daily. And if you're going to plant it out, make sure you give it a really good deep soak about once a week for the first three months. The plant's had its roots severed, so it's lost its ability to get water for itself. So you've got to baby it until those roots grow back. A word of warning, invasive plants in declared weeds should never be moved from one location to another, as this can help their spread and harm the environment. If your plant's a bit too big to transplant, your next best bet is to take cuttings. That way the plants that grow will be an exact clone of the parent plant. This is ideal for shrubby plants or perennials. What you want to do is you want to choose wood that's not too soft and not too woody. And then you cut it just below a node. That's where the leaves come out on the stem. You're looking for a piece about the length of your index finger. Remove the lower leaves that would be under the soil level. Now apply hormone gel to the base of the cutting and then pot up into propagation mix. Water well and keep moist over the coming weeks and don't allow it to dry out. Now it's one thing to pot up a handful of cuttings, but what if you've got bigger plants? Say if you want to do a hedge, you'll need a lot of plants and that can be quite expensive. So for bigger numbers, use something called a speedling tray. This is what nurseries use to propagate en masse and you can often find them at recycle yards. This tray holds 100 cuttings. So with these carob cuttings, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut just below a node and remove the lower leaf but I'm also going to reduce the length of the existing leaves so the plant doesn't draw as much water. And then into the rooting gel and into the cell. If you're moving into state, be aware that quarantine rules vary between states. 
So check your plants against Australia's interstate quarantine website and also your local state's biosecurity authority. Western Australia and Tasmania also have particularly strict rules on the importation of plant material from other states. Pots are inherently portable and that's part of their appeal but they can also be really dangerous because when the pot is full of wet soil with the added weight of your plant they're really heavy and lifting pots is the number one cause of injuries to gardeners. So when you're lifting pots use your back properly and be careful and lift them sensibly. Now if you've got any really big heavy pots like this concrete planter you're actually better to lift the plant out and pot it on empty all the soil out and then move the concrete planters separately. Major pests and diseases have been spread around Australia on plant material and on soil. So check with your local council and your state government to see if your area is home to any invaders and always check your plants for hitchhikers. Once you've got your plants potted and ready to go, you might need to rely on a car to get them there. And this can come with its own set of challenges. Strong winds generated by travelling at speed can shred soft foliage and break branches. If ever you want a demonstration of this, look at a highway near a garden centre on a long weekend. Your best bet if you can't hire a fully enclosed trailer is to hire a box trailer like this one. I'd always pack a trailer or ute tightly so that plants don't slide around and get damaged. And if you've got a plant which is too tall for the cage, simply lie it down and secure the base of it properly using other plants. Using ropes, adhere tarps to all sides of the cage. This will stop wind entering and wreaking havoc on your plants. As always, make sure that your load is properly secured if using a trailer or a ute, not only so the plants don't slide around and get damaged, but pots which appear heavy can still fly off at great speed. And finally, if you're selling, removing significant plants after the point of sale can actually violate your contract of sale. So better to do your souveniring of plants before your place even hits the market. So there you have it. If you're uprooting your life, there's no reason you can't take a bit of your garden with you. And remember, change is inevitable. Growth is optional. Mm -hmm.